Welcome to this developer quick take video on Lightning Message Service in Visual Force. My name is Peter Chitta, and I'm a developer evangelist at Salesforce. And in this short video, I'm going to talk to you about how we implemented Lightning Message Service in a Visual Force page in the Lightning Web Components Recipes app. Let's go take a look. Now, in the Visual Force implementation of Lightning Message Service, what we have is a set of objects that are surfaced to the Visual Force page context. And just like everything else related to Lightning Message Service, you have the core Lightning Message Service features, such as publishing and subscribing. And then you also have the message channel, which is the custom bit of functionality that you define for your org. In the context of Visual Force, the message channel is accessed through this message channel global variable. And for the core lightning message service features, those are accessible and surfaced via the sforce.1 JavaScript object. In this code walkthrough, I'm going to show you how we've implemented this in the Lightning Web Components Recipes app that you can see here in the Trailhead sample gallery. Again, that URL is trailhead.salesforce.com slash sample gallery. If you click on the view on GitHub link, that will take you to the repo for that sample app. And again, installation instructions are all accessible there. To see how we've actually implemented this, I've started up the Lightning Web Components Recipes app in an org. And all the message service features and functionality are accessible on the message service tab. So let me zoom in a couple of bits. There we go. Now, all of my publishers are across the top. Each publisher has a list of contact records. We select one of those contact records, and that is going to populate all of the subscribers. Each subscriber listens to a particular message channel. And once it hears a message on that message channel, it is able to respond to that with an event handler. So let's go take a look at the code. Taking a look at the message channel, you can see here that the name of this message channel is record underscore selected. Message channels get an underscore underscore C appended to the end of them, and that becomes their API name. And we're going to see this in all of the places where we reference that message channel. So let's go take a look at our first Visual Force page, the publisher. Our publisher is pretty straightforward. We are importing the actual JavaScript as a, an ES6 module that is in a static resource. So our static resource is this LMSVF static resource. And for this particular Visual Force page, we have a static resource of the same name as the page. We're importing this set page configs, and that's so we can pass in things like the message channel and the publish. Now, theoretically, we don't actually need to pass in publish. This was done as an implementation choice so that we could have a bit more traceability and make this more obvious when you're looking at the actual JavaScript module where that publish function is coming from. On the other hand, the message channel is done via a global variable binding in the JavaScript. In this instance, we absolutely have to pass this in explicitly from the Visual Force page context to our JavaScript static resource. And the reason for that is that this global variable is going to be resolved on the server side when the Visual Force page is rendered. By the time we go and execute the JavaScript module, this is no longer accessible. That ship has basically sailed. So we need to make sure we're passing this in to the actual JavaScript module. And let's go take a look at that. So this is the set page configs function that you see here. And you'll see this in, implemented in all of the other examples. And that's where we're passing in the reference to the message channel, and in this case, to the publish function. We have an event handler called handle contact selected, and that's going to be added to that list of contacts once it gets rendered. And if you saw the other video showing Lightning Web Components and Aura, the structure here is very, very similar. Uh, we simply construct a payload. So we're going to take, in this case, a record ID from the selected contact. 
And then through the way that we've surfaced this in that page configs object, we're going to invoke the publish function with the message channel and the payload that we constructed. So that's how we get our publisher working. Now, we have two subscribers in the case of Visual Force. And part of the reason for this was so that we could show the wiring up of the two different ways that Visual Force can interact with the server. The first way is with the standard Visual Force postback functionality. Now, this does a partial page refresh uh, that's all managed by the Visual Force rendering engine on the server side. The other one is using a remote object. In that case, we're going to do all the rendering on the client side. However, in each case, the way that we actually invoke Lightning Message Service is pretty much the same. So let's go take a look at those. In our first page, the LMS Subscriber Visual Force Postback Action page, you can see here that we're doing the same thing that we did before, where we're going to pull in our static resource as a module and call set page configs. And importantly, we pass in the message channel that in this case, we're going to be subscribing to. I'm also passing in the subscribe function from Lightning Message Service. Let's go take a look at how we actually do the subscription. The subscription is being done on the ready state change event. So this is an event that allows us to see that everything is ready on the page, all of the resources, all the images, etc. And at that point, we can say that it's safe to actually do something like subscribe to the message channel. And you can see here, uh, there's a bit of abstraction going on in this example. We have a subscribe to message channel function where we pass in the message channel that we saw on the Visual Force page, and we pass in a handler. And of course, subscribe to message channel is where we're going to actually trigger the LMS subscribe function, which is the wrapper for subscribe. Let's go take a look and see how it looks on the Visual Force remoting page. And what you can see is it's pretty much identical. Again, we pass in the message channel, we pass in subscribe. In the JavaScript static resource, we have our ready state change event handler. We invoke the subscribe to message channel wrapper, which then invokes subscribe, which we passed in from the visual force page. So you can start to see the pattern of how visual force works, where in each case, we're passing in the necessary resources from the visual force page context that we'll then use in the JavaScript static resource. And then we're either using the JavaScript static resource to publish the message or we're subscribing to that. I've been talking about lightning message service a few times to developer groups out there in the community. And as part of that, I have a small presentation that I've been using, and I want to share it with people who are watching this video. Now, there's some good content in here, but the main thing I want to make sure people are aware of is this slide right here, where in one of the appendices, I have added a bunch of links to all the different places where there are code samples and where you can go to Trailhead and learn how to use Lightning Message Service. So I hope this helps, and I hope you walk away feeling more comfortable using Lightning Message Service. If you found this video useful, helpful, make sure you click on like down below, and be sure to subscribe to the Salesforce Developers channel and click that bell for notifications for new videos. Thank you.